Home is where the Wi-Fi connects automatically. It's the reason for the season. As we connect with family and friends, let's also chat about how to keep our gadgets better connected to your Wi-Fi. A question being asked among some of the reviews.org editors, how far can we push your home network? And even if you're on the outer edge of your home's Wi-Fi, you're still going to want to keep up with all the work here on Reviews.org. Those subscribe links underneath the video are your magical portal to a world of cool technology chat and fun contests. There's a pretty major contest happening right now. Could be fun. On to the topic, the Wi-Fi. There's so much to talk about when we start digging into Wi-Fi, and even in my short tenure here on the Reviews.org channel, We've already produced a few videos on this topic, but how far can we go? No, literally, how far can Wi-Fi go? It's a fairly common question our editors have gotten. People are curious what options they have for setting up a home network, and they want to feel like they've made the right router choice for their needs and their budget. Maybe your home needs one powerful router. Maybe you need a router and an extender. Maybe you need to look at something like a mesh system to really spread those Wi-Fi's out. But if you want to start with one broadcasting option, how far can it go? And the answer is, I don't know. Broadly speaking, the estimated range of a typical consumer router is about 90 meters or roughly 300 feet on the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi when you're outdoors. I've seen specifications like those listed on numerous networking products, but I don't know who that helps. I don't have many people in my personal circles who just desperately need to know what router to buy for the middle of their backyard. Moving indoors, we need to play a different game of router setup once walls and other materials are in play. Is your home single story? Is it two story, multiple stories? What materials are the walls made out of? And what orientation to main living areas are there from the router's location? All of these factor into greatly reducing the broadcast effectiveness of a home router. Going through more walls at different angles wireless signals will degrade faster. But say your router is located directly above your living room, then that Wi-Fi should be a straight shot through the floor, not bouncing signal off in angles and off of other furniture. That's why it's a common idea in Wi-Fi setup guides to pick the most central location for your router and to try and mount it in a way where you have the least obstructions and the clearest air. Especially if you can get clear line of sight to the areas you're most likely to use the Wi-Fi in your home. Now, for anything emitting a broadcast signal in a home, there are FCC regulations on how much power that product can put out. We've brought up the FCC in some videos before, but it's kind of one of their major functions is just rating the claims made by manufacturers to make sure these products operate in a safe fashion. While the router's ability to broadcast can be measured, the connecting gadget's ability to receive that signal also matters. The Wi-Fi antennas in our phones, tablets, laptops, they're not all created equal either. You'll certainly find some situations where the power of the router can reach a phone but the phone isn't able to send something back to the router. And if that's a part of the conversation you think might be helpful when we're talking about some of these gadgets, I can try and chat with Shaka about setting up some kind of consistent radio test for the phones he reviews. Comments if you'd like to see something like that. There are a lot of feels about Wi-Fi and some conflicting advice on setup, so I'm not gonna claim to be a networking authority. But I'll throw out some thoughts and we can wrestle with some of those ideas down in the comments too. Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily need to be a maximum broadcast solution for many folks, especially in close neighborhoods or in apartments and condos. 802.11 is designed to share air in really clever ways, and even when you're on the same channel. Pinning your router to maximum broadcast doesn't always improve your signal speed or stability, especially if your phone's antenna can't quite broadcast back. Also, you're running that box at maximum, so hypothetically, that's more power used and more heat than you might need to generate, which could reduce the overall life of your router. So, how far can your Wi-Fi go? 
I don't know, but probably pretty far unless you live in some kind of Faraday cage. Consumer grade networking equipment is getting remarkably good at lower and lower prices where the impact of router location and obstacles probably matters more to your phone or laptop than to the router itself. And we've got much better options now for extending that signal with repeaters and mesh. Mesh networking is a terrific solution for larger homes and funky floor plans. Smaller, lower power transmitters spaced strategically is probably a better solution for many folks out there than trying to max out one big router in the middle of your home. We've got some other videos on this topic, breaking down new technologies for Wi-Fi and comparing different options and solutions. You can catch those videos linked below too. And don't forget to hit the reviews.org home site for even more articles on Wi-Fi setup and networking maintenance. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, and subscribing to the channel for reviews.org. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, AKA Some Gadget Guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.